there and welcome to Revna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang and this is episode 6 of Kings and Priests Decreeing and Declaring. It's a topic I'm going to be discussing with you today on who we are in Christ and how I believe we need to start seeing ourselves because I think a lot of people in the church especially have fallen away from how they view the congregation of who we are and how we don't take much authority anymore especially when we're supposed to be Christ's helper I mean that's what a bride is it's it's his help meet and we seem to be sort of neglecting on that or if we do it's mainly just in certain prayers of just asking um, thinking that we don't have the authority within us you know indwelled within us by the Holy Spirit or by Christ or even the Word of God to go in and actually stomp out the evil that is within the world today I think that's one of the main things Jesus is looking for within us in order for this last harvest season to happen we're all sitting around waiting for Christ and Christ is actually sitting around waiting for us to start taking initiative down here and standing up for his name and a few of the things that I was mentioning at the beginning of this session be that of speaking in tongues for self edification for building yourself up in the spirit so that the Holy Spirit can speak to you as well and edify you and strengthen you the use of oils whether it's for anointing of yourself or of your house for protection uh, during these times uh, against the enemy and all his plans for any destruction or ailments sickness uh, lack of money lack of anything really um, to plead the blood of Christ to understand who we are I feel next is probably a big one especially out of all the loss that we've had uh, <laughs> been dealt with these past couple of years some of us financially some of us uh, lack of church maybe closing down uh, friendships family all of that and I know the previous session I talked about the loss in my life the one that I had struggles with the most how I can see everything that is going to be coming in this new era that is upon us the turning of the tables that Jesus is going to be doing all the prosperity given back to his kingdom to his people to help build up his kingdom I can see all that uh, I could see the wicked ones being arrested or being put to death or some of them becoming turncoats and coming in the Christ again which is something we can all pray for and I think we should even people we just don't like I've been praying for Biden and Kamala and even Obama people to come back into the faith and accept Christ as their Savior it doesn't mean that they won't get their just punishments and lose everything but at least they'll be having uh, salvation and life you know eternally with God in heaven so we need to do that all these things all the new technology all the new um, businesses and creations that are going to be coming in on this time I see it all except for the one thing which is just the loss of certain friendships we saw those within my inner circle and if some of you are questioning who are watching it right now well am I in the inner circle that's probably to not make you feel bad or for those who are, are curious if is it me um, probably the easiest way to assume if you are or not is if you even though you may be miles away from me if you still get birthday cards or Christmas gifts or you know just stuff keeps coming in the mail um, yeah that's, that's probably the easiest way to assume that you are uh, part of that inner circle if I've before the loss of losing my friendships if I spoke to you at least more than 10 times in a month then I think it's safe to assume you're a part of that inner circle so um, but since this loss has happened I think it's been kind of a great deal on a uh, deal of damage upon my life and it's just it's the thing that has been keeping me down um, but lately I've been praying into it more and trying to put those feelings on the back burner to get this done these videos kind of moving forward and progressing a bit more in my life so I can get them out to you still doing it just once a week but I, I just feel that there's other things that we need to focus on and we need to put those things we need to 
give them to the Lord. We need to put them to bed. We need to give them to the Lord. Let him deal with it so that we can move forward into what he is calling us to do during these times. And it could be anything on your end as well. So once we do that and we can move forward, we can understand who we are in Christ, who we are dealing with, and the opposition from that particular enemy, how we can overcome it. But I think a lot of it has to do with understanding who we are. I think it's safe to say those of you who are watching this film, especially those who are aware of what is happening and watch things like Elijah's Streams and Watchmen on the Wall and Julie Green, people like that, I think you're fully aware of who Christ is. So I don't need to go into much detail on that. Um, he is our Lord. He is our Savior. I mean, he is our everything that we need. And... I don't think we so much get confused or have trouble in understanding on who Christ is so much as who we are, who he is asking us to be. Um, even though he is the one that's going to stomp all of this out, we need to start declaring and decreeing and using our own voices and our own actions and our own lives to be in sync with what he is doing and what he is calling us to do. Again, I got up early to do this, so forgive me because I'm half awake. Uh, the squirrel cup isn't here right now. I think it's being washed. This one is from the Black Forest Inn in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My house brother from Ukraine, Alex, took me there. It was good. I liked it. I like German food. I don't think it has anything to do with my last name. Um, so, yeah. I think I'm going to start off with this particular session with Matthew 6, 3, where it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. And I think this is kind of a good header from last episode, where we're talking about all the things that have been lost in our lives that either may be a God or may not be of God. <coughs> Getting over that sickness from last week, so... Hopefully I don't cough too much. Whether he's removing it or the enemy has removed it out of our lives, he's trying to build us up into something stronger. And hopefully if we give that to him, he would be able to return it back to us uh, in exponential amounts or fix it to where either we will not need or have such a craving for it anymore or it will be returned in the rightful manner that it was supposed to be in our lives where it's not corrupted and... Um, maybe in the wrong way of thinking of how that relationship or want that you have in your own life should be. It is now being used for the Lord. And there's something else. I was deciding whether or not to put it into this episode or save it for another episode. I may repeat it again. Um, <clears throat> but I think it kind of ties into Matthew uh, 6, 3, and that's also John 14, which is 13 through 17. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I think there's there's other verses that I could have perused through and, and pulled out, but I think more or less there's a, a lot of people who are against this, what's called the kingdom age. I never believed in it too much myself, um, but I think that they don't like this idea because, you know, it, it speaks about asking things from God and he'll give it to you. It's a kind of a prosperity gospel, but I think a lot of the churches misunderstand what it means. They think that God is some magical genie in the sky, where if you say this stuff, he's just going to grant it to you. But that's not really what it's saying. Um, at least from other verses that I picked out as well, too. It's if you pray for a thing, if you want something, ask me it. If it's within his will, if it's part of his plan, if it's something that is used to glorify him in the end stretch, if it's there for that purpose, then if you ask it, he will grant it to you. It's not like, you know, I'm going to pray and ask God for $2 billion and God's going to give me $2 billion. That would be a prosperity gospel. The question is, is that part of God's plan? What are you asking the $2 billion for? Has he even gave you an utterance to claim that or ask to receive this money from what is coming down as part of his gifts to you? 
are you going to use it to build up his kingdom? You know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of, there's a big calculation that goes into this. <clears throat> are you asking for the right reasons? Again, if you ask me in my name that I will do the father, uh, or that the Father may be glorified. Sorry, kind of lost my place there for a second. Are you using it to glorify God? Are you using it for His purposes? Are you asking for the right reasons? I'm not saying God's not going to give you two billion dollars. I'm just saying the the chances are probably slim because He knows your heart, and I'm pretty sure you know your heart as well too. If if I had money like that coming in, yeah, I'd probably spend a little bit of it on myself and my family. There's there's no doubting that. But I'm also one, I mean, I, I work in a bank. I, the last thing that I worry about really is money. It's always on people's minds, you know, funds, f the financial securities and stuff like that. We all worry about that. But just the idea of lots and lots of money, like if I ever won the lotto, I, I honestly, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Like I, I know that the majority of it I'd give to either friends and family and I'd use probably... 80% of what I got to fund the kingdom in some sort of service or not. I know that uh, Steve at Elijah Streams wanted to make up his own films. Maybe I'd help with the production of that, you know, to help being a producer and, and a, a, a financier. Um, I know I'd give money to the prophets. I know I'd give money to certain churches to help build up what they're doing to spread the word or to help others across the world. My phone's still beeping and I turned on the volume. That's, that's interesting. Anyways, uh, it's that type of thing. Ask, and it will be given unto you, but ask in accordance to his will. That's not a prosperity gospel. It could be. I mean, God could want to bless you just for the mere sake of blessing you. But if he's going to give you, you know, a, a lot of stuff, I think it's supposed to be used for the kingdom purposes. That doesn't mean that every single cent that you get as a blessing you give away. I mean, he wants you to be blessed as well, too. But if you win two billion and you're keeping one billion and, you know, 999 million and just giving the rest away as a pittance, you know, that's a condition of the heart. You, you need to start figuring out, you know, why is this here? Why is he blessing me with this? Why am I asking for these things? And will he give it to me based in accordance to his will? And if he doesn't, you shouldn't be upset. God's answer is never maybe. It's always yes or no or later, but never maybe. It's not like God's unsure if he's going to give you the money. Now, he knows whether he's going to give it to you right now or he's not going to give it to you or he will give it to you, but at a later date. And those are the things you need to look forward to um, and, and understand why he's doing it and why you should be asking for such things. So I don't really believe so much in prosperity gospel as many churches do these days where they think it's just you're asking God like a genie in a bottle. I think you need to get in agreement with what he is trying to give you, understand and hear what God is trying to say, understand what your calling is, declare it, receive it. And say, yes, Lord, I accept these gifts and then watch him bestow them on you. My banking job was one of these, um, which is funny because I work at Banner Bank that particular week that I got the job um, or right before it. Actually, I kept hearing prophetic words on the Internet that I watched daily and they were talking about banners, you know, was, wave your banner high and, you know, t and, you know, be under the banner. <laughs> and I'm just like, why are all these prophets talking about banner? Oh, it's like it, it just hit me. It's like, wow, I just got the job at Banner Bank. And now all of a sudden I'm clicking on all these just random prophetic words and are talking about banners. And uh, I've been loving my job so far. It's been great. I can definitely see myself working to retirement there. So things like that, certain gifts, certain provisions, certain securities that he gives you, um, you know, and little winks and nudges sometimes helps with that as well, too. But I think a lot of people don't ask that one because they see the prosperity gospel as a, a, a bad thing or they, they view it in the context of selfish needs as opposed to using the prosperity that one gets to build up the kingdom. So there's that. But there's also not asking, declaring or decreeing or receiving anything from God because they also don't see themselves as God sees them or who he wants us to be. He doesn't want us wimpy. He doesn't want us worn out, exhausted, which is hypocritical of me because that's exactly what I've been for 
past year or so. It's completely worn out two years now, longer. Um, beaten, ready to go home, just telling God almost every single day for months and months and months, Lord, just take me home. Just, it was either one of those, uh, take my life or take my life. You know, it's like, take it, use me for something or just take me out, take me home because I am, I'm done. I am just completely done with this world. I want nothing to do with it. I just, I loathe being here. And I know that after, you know, didn't take much ponderance to come to this conclusion, but that's not what the Lord wants from you. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be joyous. He wants you to be filled with his glory. And it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to put on the Pollyanna face, you know, and be like, everything's grand. Everything's great. And he doesn't want that either, but he wants us to be glorified through him. He wants, he wants the glory and we're supposed to portray that into our lives. So I knew that taking me out, being depressed and weary, wasn't the answer that I needed to stick to my gun, stick through it because he has a purpose for my life. There's something he wants me to do and I need to be here for that. And that's where I got sort of this inclination to do these videos, maybe just as a starter, which is sad because I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't really enjoy these. Um, I mean, I like putting them out to hopefully reach somebody out there who may be able to understand who they are in Christ and how to use their um, God-given gifts and talents and abilities more and be prepared for what is coming. But at the same time, like Friday night, Saturday morning, it's just like kind of a weariness. I get up and it's like, oh, I got to do this video. I didn't... I'm just, I'm not up for it. It's, it's almost like added pressure onto me. Like the enemy is like, you will not do these, you know? And it's like, no, I know I need to get these out. I, every week I promise I should at least Friday or Saturday, get something out to you. And so I am literally forcing myself to do this because I feel it's part of my calling and maybe not the calling, but it's the stepping stone to something he's building me up to. So I'm starting out a little weak because this is all new to me, but I'm hoping in the long run, I'll be able to build up more progression and build up more strength. And you saw how it was with the first video I had, and I was just kind of worn out and tired. And now I'm starting to, after uh, last week and praying into it more with the loss of friends and giving it more to him, I've been feeling a little bit more energetic. Um, I might not show it with me slouching in this chair. Because I'm kind of in a seat that's sunken down. It's the old office chair. And I kind of, I don't know, getting a little back strain from it. But I, I do internally feel a little bit more strengthened um, f as opposed to the past videos. So, and I think that's been uh, a, a buildup from understanding who it is that we are in Christ and who he's asking us to be, which... Uh, now that I've gotten into that long introduction, we'll move into it. Almost 20 minutes in. It's crazy. Well, you know what? It's 18 minutes. Let's go. Let's let's pull the full 20 by doing communion. And then we'll get into it. For those who wish to partake. You know what? I'm sorry. I totally forgot. I should post up maybe a link from here on out too of where to where you can order these. There's tons of places. You can get it off Amazon, really. In fact, I think that's, I think that's where I got these was Amazon. But take communion in remembrance of our Lord and what he did for us. Lord, help me get the taste of coffee out of my mouth as I do this. And I'll pray too. I've been forgetting to do that lately. I try to lead out with prayer. Um, but going into it, I keep forgetting. And so, Lord, Heavenly Father, please forgive us, especially me, about our past sins. In these past couple weeks since the last time that I prayed. and I prayed to you within the past couple weeks. I'm just saying with these videos. <laughs> the past couple weeks of forgetting to lead, leading in with prayer. <laughs> to forgive us of our actions, of our thoughts, of our deeds, and cleanse us as we try and turn over that leaf, try and repent of our ways, <coughs> and get more into your word, more into understanding of who we are through you, 
and what you are calling us to be, that I may speak words of truth to these people, that they may be woken up, having their eyes opened a bit more into what you are calling them into and have an understanding of who they are and who you made them to be so that they can be strong, fierce warriors for you. And that we do not do this out of pride, but we do it out of your strength, for we have none left. And we build up our strength from you through the power of the Holy Spirit, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ and through your word. And we'll go into depth on that and give me the strength to speak and the words to use. In Jesus' name I pray. That microphone is really close. All right. There's actually a lot of things we are in Christ. I'm going to go over, I shouldn't say the majority of them, but just a few that uh, many different churches label us as, but they never unify them together. Or if they do, they're, they're sporadic in different sermons and lectures and homilies and stuff. And the two that I'm hearing the most of recently since these prophetic words have been coming out within the last couple of years is kings and priests we are kings and priests of the new jerusalem but this world is a saint making machine and it is also we are put in here to be built up into what that is and i understand that there's also the thousand year reign of christ where he will teach us even more and we will be built up into that and then after the thousand year reign comes that final battle and then a new heaven and a new earth will be built the old ones destroyed and they will be unified into one and from there we will have both our spiritual and purified fleshly bodies fused into one we will be with the lord and from there it is just eon after eon after eon of new exposures and greater abilities and greater teachings and greater uh like expressions of who god is and us learning it and i think here on earth since it is a shadow of heaven we see that biblically we we see certain exposures that the bible teaches us and throughout the centuries you know sometimes decades but for the most part centuries even millennia these words get revealed more and more and more it's like we are understanding the depths of certain biblical verses uh, kings and priests being one of them and a lot of churches don't like what is being mentioned today by many of these prophets that are coming out of the woodwork by the hundreds and expressing saying we have the word from god this is you know this is what's going down and they're almost for the most part all in unison about what's going to take place now they may have different styles of expression some are more darker some are more lighter some you know you need to find which one speaks to you the best because there's a lot of prophets that i've listened to and a lot of them are just way too dark and i realized that that particular word might be for a particular set of people in a particular place not just place in location but place in their life like this is where they're at they need to progress into other things later and you've you've overpassed the dark part um you've been awakened so you're listening to words where you've you've surpassed that but it's bringing you back into like kind of the shaking awaking of what certain people need to have it'd be almost like jonah going to nineveh to uh preach their destruction and you're in the town over and you think that he's speaking to you and you're worried and just you know like distraught at this certain prophetic word but the prophetic word wasn't for you it was for these people these people needed to hear that particular word which needed to be said and though you're in agreement with the prophetic word it may not settle or resonate with you because it's not technically speaking to you it's speaking to these other people um you're over here they're over there and the words you need to hear are for the words that are speaking to you for this particular time and what you need to do
And I believe this is how revelation works. Now there's prophetics that, uh, that speak worldly, um, man, so many of them, I'm, I'm not even going to list them off. It's, it's so ridiculous how many there are these days. Cause I know I'm going to forget one that I really like after listening to this and be like, Oh, I didn't mention this person. Um, but for the most part in general, all the prophets are in unison speaking the same thing. Like God is expressing in many different ways in many different colors and in many different volumes, what is going to be taking place. And there's a lot of people that are not on board with this because they think either the prophetic is gone. It's not here anymore. Um, there's no such thing as Kings and priests or who we are as a body of Christ here in this realm, because it's speaking of a future tense, you know, in the new kingdom will be Kings and priests. It's like, yes, but we're being conditioned for it here. This is a saint making machine world. That's why we're here. We're supposed to be prepping ourselves and get ready for grander things by starting here. This is like ground level, you know, 101 of what we need to become. Let me get a drink of coffee because I'm starting to burp. Revelation 1 6 says, it's a continuing sentence, but it's pretty much, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. Amen. Revelation 5, 9 through 10. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. <clears throat> For you were slain and you have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on all the earth. Now, I could be expressing the new earth that is to come, but since this is a shadow of heaven, we need to, we need to start prepping right now, especially for the war that is at hand. Uh, when speaking to the Israelites in Exodus, God says, now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice <clears throat> and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Now, the Israelites were paving the way for the New Testament, for the revelation of Jesus Christ to come. And they were a special people. And if they were the, what most people consider the friends of God, and they were a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, how much more so are the children of God? It's friends of God, which were the Israelites, and they paved the way for the coming of the intake of his new adopted children into his kingdom through the works of Jesus Christ. But now we are the kingdom of priests and the holy nation. So we're priests and we're kings. This is, we got that down. As kings and priests, this is what the terms of decreeing and declaring are. When you're a king, you decree, just like in Exodus with the pharaohs, you know, so it is said, so it is written. You are decreeing something outward. Now that is not something, again, like the prosperity gospels, where you say something and God, the mag magical genie in a bottle, comes down and grants it to you. You are decreeing what the Lord is allowing to speak through you, and you are in agreement with that. But as priests, you also declare, you declare his word. You speak it out. You are in agreement with it. You are professing it. You are spreading it. Um, you are making yourselves holy through it. It's nothing you do. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's through the word of God and through the blood of Christ. But we are kings and priests. We need to decree and we need to declare. It's nothing that we decree and declare through us. It is what God decrees and declares, and we express it outwardly through us, through our voice. And a lot of people, I think, don't do that, especially when it comes to certain things like the prosperity gospel. They're, they're, not, they're not in agreement with what the prophets are saying. 
you know, many of the prophets are, you need to decree and declare this. You, you need to be in agreement with what, what the Lord is saying. You need to call this in. The Lord is waiting for you to par be partakers in this battlefield with him. Not just praying, oh, I hope this happens, Lord, but actually taking the initiative to know who you are. I am a king. I'm going to express this. The enemies of God, the foes, the demonic entities that are out there cannot stand a chance against you if you're out there professing what the Lord is trying to do and being in agreement with it and calling it out. You know, the exposures that are happening right now, you need to scream, expose, expose. I mean, just get, get it out as much as you can. Whatever God is calling you to do, profess and and the prophets are there to help they're there to give sort of sort of an initiative kick you know hey i've got a word from the lord you know he's telling us to be prepared for what is coming look into this speak into this agree with this receive this there's gifts coming down you need to take what i'm giving to you openly hands out express that you receive them so that they can be given to you and you can use them both uh for your security and your health but also for the expansion of his kingdom not only that but we are ambassadors for christ second corinthians 5 20. now then we are ambassadors for christ as though god were pleading through us we implore you on christ's behalf uh sorry christ's behalf to be reconciled to god an ambassador is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. As C.S. Lewis describes, uh, we are in enemy-occupied territory right now, but we're ambassadors of Christ to spread his word. And when we read the Bible or where we go to church and listen to a sermon, we're actually listening to the secret messages of the Holy Spirit that is coming and speaking to us. This is why certain revelation, I feel, is held off until certain eras. This is why uh, for the past, you know, couple hundred years or even a thousand years, this new revelation of what's happening in this last harvest time has not been revealed until now. Because if it was revealed back then, it would give the enemy, it would give Luciferian uh, elite world order time to prep and plan. But now that it's being revealed to us in the time that such things are happening, they don't really have time to plan for this. The trap has already been set. Now, we can get exposures and revelation to what is happening, but even if they do catch on and they're listening to certain prophets, and they are listening to them, trust me on that, they're taking notes, it doesn't matter because God already went ahead and accomplished his mission for us. So it doesn't matter what they do, it doesn't matter what they say, it doesn't matter what they try to come up with, it will always be stopped. And it's a revelation for us given at the last moment so that we can be prepared and entering into this new season. I, I don't know how that works personally in the timeline of the past on why it wouldn't have been revealed apart from the enemy understanding it and trying to work around it, but why the Holy Spirit didn't speak to certain people back then on what is coming I, I believe that maybe he did to, to a few people, because if you really think about it, if you go back in certain books, if you go back in certain like videos and audio, and you listen to certain preachers or prophets speak, it was there, but it was very, you know, it was very subdued. It was very hidden. Um, you know, not too many people were speaking of it, where now it's just, it's starting to get amplified and it's starting to blow out. And, and the, some of the church is not awake to it yet. They're, they're not realizing it. They think that this is some crackpot, you know, side, like joke that that's happening. But there's different revelations throughout all the ages that God has been giving. Look at what happened in the 70s. Uh, the most easiest one that I could explain with the Jesus Revolution movie. I mean, look at Chuck Smith and how the old church was. And then all these new hippies came in with a different perspective and different outlook. And it's like, no, you guys, it's not that they're doing this completely wrong. But you need to grow into, you know, what is happening here. And the explosion happened with the Jesus Revolution and Lonnie Frisbee and Chuck Smith and uh, Greg Locke, all those people. And I believe this is going to be another one where it's going to be... Uh, in exponential amounts, uh, you look at um, uh, Asbury Church, you know, what happened there for weeks and weeks. I think that's just a taste. That's just a little peppercorn of what's going to be coming down the chute very soon. I believe more and more of it will sprout up after this dark period, but 
Until then, even while we go through the darkness, we still need to be the ambassadors of heaven. We still need to spread this light. We still need to be those beacons of hope for people during this dark time. We need to be prepared. We need to be kings and priests for what is going down. And I will move farther down. We also need to be warriors for Christ. I'm not sure where I took this message from, um, but I I did like it. I just, I just cut and pasted it out because it gives... Uh, certain Bible verses. I'll read them out. But um, the way that the person typed it up was really cool. It says, a warrior after God's heart is a citizen of God's kingdom. And that's Philippians 3, 20 and 21. A warrior after God's heart follows orders. And these are the tie-in verses is what I'm saying. I don't think these are the actual quotes, but they, they tie into these verses, which is Acts 13, 22. A warrior after God's heart prepares for battle, Ephesians 6, 14 through 17. A warrior uh, after God's heart guards his heart, Proverbs 4, 23. A warrior after God's heart is a man of integrity, Psalms 15, 1 through 5. A warrior after God's heart is a man of authenticity, 1 Peter uh, 2, 8 and 9. A warrior after God's heart lays his life on the line, Ephesians 2, 12. A warrior after God's heart rises to the challenge, 2 Timothy 4, Two through five, a warrior after God's heart makes a stand. Ephesians six ten through thirteen, a warrior after God's heart provides for his loved ones, which is First Timothy five eight, and a warrior after God's heart finishes well. Second Timothy four one through eight. We need to be warriors, which is the individual, uh, the individual name of who we are. Now, there's also soldiers which is, I think, sort of the combined or the congregate of us as the army of God. And there's a difference between a warrior and a soldier. And I type this one up too. A soldier is one who is a militant follower of an organization. On the other hand, a warrior exhibits bravery and courage under given circumstances. They don't have to be part of anything. Uh, you look at... Um, take the Disney movie Brave, you know, where she stood alone or um, there wasn't like a mass army following her. She just stood up for what she contended to be right and brave uh, under these given circumstances. He demonstrates courage towards an organization. He doesn't do it through it. That's the difference between a warrior and a soldier. Like he will be standing in opposition of the organization against it or the soldier may be part of it. This is the important difference between the two words. In other words, a soldier is a fighter by profession, whereas a warrior exhibits great courage when the time comes, though he is not a fighter by profession. He, he may not be a fighter at all, but he stands up for truth and justice. Um, and I believe that we're both a warrior and a soldier because we're both independent in nature for our own selves, as well as part of the body of Christ. In unison with the congregation, we fight in unison as soldiers this battle. <clears throat> and as soldiers, as warriors too, but as soldiers, we are equipped with the armor. And I believe this is what Paul was writing. He was probably looking at, you know, the, the Roman soldier while writing out Ephesians. <clears throat> where he says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness in this world against the spiritual wickedness in high places that was Ephesians six twelve. that's my favorite verse in all the Bible it's the uh, on the logo emblem of the Ephesia den sign that I make at the video uh, at the beginning of this video um, I've been big into spiritual warfare I'll get more into that in the next video pertaining to spiritual warfare, the monster mashing one. Um, but it goes on. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil day, or withstand in the evil day, sorry, and having done all to stand. When, you, when you've done everything you can and you just can't anymore, at least stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, 
wherewith ye will be able to put out and quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And in the old days in Roman, they, they would put this sort of, uh, I don't want to say tar because that lights up, but this uh, certain liquid on it where the flaming arrows would land and it would extinguish the, the, the flames. So take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we need to be equipped every day. And it's from what some of the prophets have said, people like Kat Kerr, other people that um, have been to heaven. I, I know some people don't agree with that, but I'm just going to take their word for it on this because they have spoken other things which have came to pass. And their words on heaven are pretty interesting. But, and I believe Donna Rigney too mentioned it, uh, the arm of God is an actual thing. It's It's not like this, you know, kind of nice thought to have you ask the Lord every day for your spiritual armor and you will be equipped with all of this spiritually speaking like you know you, you don't see it on you but it is laid upon your spirit body you ask every day Lord please equip us with our spiritual armor in fact I'm doing that right now Lord equip me with my spiritual armor so that I can overcome the evils of the day the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and of children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him, which is the last, well, I shouldn't say the last one, but one of the things that I'm going to be getting to is that we are also heirs with Christ. And I don't think people understand really what that means in the sense of spiritual warfare and how we're supposed to act here as kings and priests. All authority and dominion and power had been given unto Christ after he resurrected he like it's it's almost as if God the Father gave him the ring signet of you know the kingdom of heaven everything all power and gave it to Christ and now he wears it but we're also the bride of Christ we're supposed to be heirs with him we have the authority we have the power not by ourselves but through Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit it, that indwells in us we have all dominion all power all authority working through us for the glory of God and I think many Christians don't understand this and it's like no God's gonna come he's gonna come and rapture us he's gonna take us out of here and it's like he is coming back for a bride that is without spot or blemish of which the gates of hell will not prevail against. He's not coming back for a wimpy church. He's coming back for a fierce warrior, soldier, king, priest, ambassador, uh, to put it lightly, butt kicker of church. Like he is coming back for a bride that's not going to take any isht, if you know what I mean. He wants us to be partakers in what he's calling us to be and part of his plan and part of what he wants for this world. And he's going to give us a taste of that in this last harvest season once we stomp out the evil, which well, he's going to stomp it out. But we need to be in agreement with it. We need to be proclaiming and declaring and decreeing all the stuff that he is trying to push into this world. And the faster we do it, the faster it comes. The less we do it, the longer it's going to take. Just like those grumblers in the wilderness for 40 years. They could have been there in two weeks. They didn't, they weren't in agreement with God. They weren't declaring and decreeing. They weren't listening to Moses. They grumbled the whole time. Oh, look, now we're going to walk around the wilderness for 40 years. I think God was giving us uh, a precedence of what's going to happen if we don't change it ourselves and grow up and start listening to what God is calling us to be and act like it and call into it and start moving ourselves as the actual bride of Christ, which is the last one I'm going to be getting into, which is part of the heirs. We're the bride of Christ. We're supposed to be the help meet of Christ. We're supposed to be the ones down here who are working with, agreeing with, speaking with, acting with, declaring with, decreeing with, being with Christ during this time, listening to what he is calling us to be, listening to what he is asking us to do. And we're just not, we're not doing it. And we need to wake up to it. Because the faster we do, the faster this is going to happen. And I'm, I don't know if I'm talking harshly or just more sternly. I don't know what it is. But it's it, it, this This needs to be done. Like, And I'm not scolding anybody because I'm one of those people who is, I feel I'm doing it the least. This past year, especially with the last episode of, of giving into why I've been just so down and why I've not been acting into it, that's why. <laughs> And we need to give that to the Lord. I need to give this pain that I had to the Lord. We all have this somewhere. 
in, in some particular segment of our life. That is what is holding us back. That is what the enemy is pressing us down with. That is what he's screaming into your ear right now. You will never achieve this. You will never attain it. It will never happen. Give up. And you hear that every day. You might as well just kill yourself. All the time, nonstop, perpetually. We need to give that to the Lord, let him deal with it, and move on to what he is calling us into. I feel that is, well, that is a majority of our calling. There's, there's different, there's different things. There's different, I mean, it's, it's not all the same, all right? Not everyone's going to be a prophet. Not everyone's going to be a teacher. Not everyone's going to be a pastor. Not everyone is going to work in a particular field. Not everyone is going to go off into ministry, into evangelism, into the desert, you know, to talk to a random tribe somewhere and live, live their life in the dirt. You know, it's, it's just like, there's different callings for different people. I mean, to understand that just because you're not in that calling, just because you're not doing this particular thing that maybe a particular church asked you to do or called you into, you got to remember there's a split between that. There's what the church is doing and then there's what is Christ is calling you to do. And there's nothing wrong with partaking in what a church is doing and what certain people are doing. If they're asking you to do it and you feel that led to go into that, then do it. But if God is calling you to do something, you have to follow through with it. And this is kind of why I'm doing these videos. I'm, I'm worn out, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, but I feel I'm compelled to do these videos for you because I feel that somehow, somewhere, I'm reaching at least one person, just one, right? Not like Abraham where I'm asking for 10, I just want one. If there's one person that I'm reaching, then I'm doing my job. And I think all of us need to start listening, following our hearts into what the Lord is speaking into us accepting that gift, accepting that calling, and it'll bring you into something of more fulfillment to what his plan is. But we need to start taking the initiative. We need to start understanding who we are in Christ. We're not just sheep being led to the slaughter, right? We're fierce warriors in Christ. We are the ones who are going to be judging the angels in the end times. We have authority within us. It's not our authority, it's his authority, but we need to be in agreement with that authority. And I'm telling you, once we come to this recognition, things are going to start changing. They're already changing, but I think it'll happen at a faster pace and the enemy will not stand a chance against us at all. Everything that he does will not come to fruition in any way, shape or form. And we need to be in agreement with that because God has been asking us to be in agreement with that. So that was today's topic. I hope it wasn't too random and sort of chaotic and, you know, everywhere. But again, do not take just my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Don't listen to any prophet. Don't listen to anyone at all. Any teacher, any pastor, take it up with God first. Let him give you the discernment to understand what is going on. You know, Question every spirit is what the Bible says. And I'm going to come over here. Whoops. <laughs> Got so much junk on my desk. I don't even want to show you guys a picture. It's pretty disgusting. <clears throat> Given my book recommendation, it's a lot of light. <laughs> Glad News by Sammy Tanago. Um, and I, I, I saw Sammy speak when I was living in Reading. I was at my in laws' uh, church. And he was there speaking about, he, he was, he was a Muslim who was, um, <coughs> he became a Christian, but he also did deep research into the ancient Muslim faith, uh, ancient Islam and started reading and understanding that actually in the Muslim faith, traditionally, originally it started biblically, like there were certain scriptures and the one thing that uh, I wish this book had was some of the um, footnotes and like slide shots he showed while he was speaking um, some of the stuff on screen that gave certain Islamic quotes saying stuff like Jesus was a son of God. The Bible is the infallible word of God. If anything that we write goes against what the Bible says, it's to be thrown out or, or not believe it's, you, you don't take it as, as truth. Um, there's, there's a whole slew of these different, this different, uh, quotes from Islamic scripture. And I almost want to write them and be like, can, can you, can, are we able to send like a, you know, some, some of these footnotes, like in a, you know, like a PDF or something. Cause I, I would love to have these cause they're, they're amazing. Um, 
So he goes around and teaches Christians and speaks uh, to different Muslims as, as well, too, about how the original Islamic faith started. And, you know, it was more Christian based until it got very skewed um, in the decades that followed. It's a really good book and it's worth giving a read. Um, highly recommend it. And I also highly recommend my next uh, YouTuber that I'm going to post up. Her name is Shirley Lice. She gets words from God as well. She hasn't been on in about two months, and I'm getting kind of worried. A lot of people that follow her are like, is she alive? Is she on summer vacation? Is she doing okay? Um, she's sort of vanished. Her videos are still up. It's not like YouTube banned her. She's still there, but it's just like she's she's not around. But I highly recommend her. She's very good. She is one of the first people that I've heard speak about this whole Christ coming back to raise the dead in Christ. Um, that's what sort of got me into episode two of the how soon is now, how long is end video. Like she was one of the first ones that I've been listening to where she starts speaking it. And it first started, you know, when she started speaking, it was like, I'm just, I'm coming to raise a dead, you know, there'll be lots of healings and stuff. And I'm like, okay. But the further she got, the more words that she received from the Lord, it started to delve more into, I'm coming back to raise the dead in Christ. And that's what got me into that verse. And I'm like, there's, there's something here. There's something that we're not getting. That's not, that's right there in our face, but it hasn't been revealed to us. And that was the then part, the, you know, I'm coming back the, the, at the song of the last trumpet, the dead in Christ, you know, will be raised up. Then we who remain in our life will follow, you know, and meet them in the clouds. And it's like, wait, wait a minute. Is that in the blinking of an eye? No, that's that's how we go. That's not when we go. So how long is this then? Like, are we going to spectate the raising of the dead happening? And then comes the last harvest. And then when the last true Christian is saved, then we get raptured up and that kicks in the tribulation. There seems to be a period of time that a lot of people are starting to realize is going to come to fruition. And a lot of prophets and a lot of watchmen on the wall are exposing this and, and bringing up verses being like, hey, Maybe we got all this wrong. Maybe there's something here where the dead in Christ go. There's something that's going to happen in between the dead in Christ and those who remain. And that is the last harvest season where the billion soul harvest is going to be happening. God's going to give us a taste of what his kingdom should have been. It's going to be grand and glorious and there's going to be healings and, uh, you know, new inventions and new creations and like all this stuff. And then after a certain period, some say like maybe a hundred years or so when the last Christian is saved, the last one, when, when the number is filled, that's when we get raptured up. So just a thought. Again, I'm banging it around my head too. That's why I'm doing these videos. These, these are new exposures that are happening. These are new verses that are coming into light within the past couple of years that have just been revealed to us. Many of the prophets are speaking of it. Lots of watchmen on the wall, such as myself, that are aware and are you know, paying attention to what's going around the world are like, yeah, it seems that there's something here. It seems that there was something that God hidden from us and now is being revealed to us. Um, so, it, And it's different. It's completely different from what the past millennia of the church has been like. But it, it seems... Uh, it seems there's been a lot of things coming to fruition, especially a lot of prophetic words. We need to start paying attention to that, and we need to start realizing who we are in Christ so we can start acting upon this and getting ready for what's going to be coming at hand because there is a big, huge, massive, great shake coming before all the good stuff happens. It's going to get dark, and we need to be aware, and we need to be the past setters and awake to what is happening when it comes so that we can be the beacons of light and give everyone the rest assured and the hope in Christ during that time. So I hope this has helped some and father, thank you for today. Thank you for, I felt you speaking a little bit to me <laughs> today. The words were coming out and then I was realizing that I was starting to get a little harsher in tone and talking and being more straightforward. And I realized that it wasn't so much me speaking as it was you. And thank you for that. Thank you for giving me the words today, and I hope we've at least reached one person out there to be prepared and be awake for what is coming. Uh, hopefully more of these videos will help them, even though it's they're small in nature and I don't see myself as a big person or a big YouTuber at all. I'm hoping I'm at, at least getting to somebody out there. And if it's for you and for your work, I'm sure it'll reach other people sooner or later, because it always does. And I pray that during this time, more people will become awake, more people will become aware to who they are in you so that they can work for you and for your glory. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's it for right now. I can never really get this microphone adjusted because it doesn't matter where I put it. It always seems to pop when I do the peas and stuff, so I apologize for that. I got no crust in the beard. I'm a little bit more awake. I'm not so worn down and winded. Thank you, Lord, for this past week of giving me more insight of giving my pains to you. And I do hope and stand in agreement that they will be returned, that they will catch up. And I pray the same for you as well, too, that are having any doubts or troubles or situations or circumstances, trials and tribulations that you may have that is stopping you from becoming and reaching your full potential in Christ as a king of priests, as a soldier and a warrior, as an ambassador, as a bride, and as an heir to the kingdom of God. We need to start taking authority into this and start being bold and stand up for what we believe, not just being a bunch of chickens hiding away in the dark. Time to take action, people. And this new video, episode six and so forth, hopefully will be a little bit more umph to it now that I have some of the weariness and slain in spirit gone for me. So I feel it. I feel myself progressing and hopefully this will help you more as well too. So God bless and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.